groups are negatively charged. So when, once it's negatively charged, it doesn't go through the membrane anymore. And that's the, that was the problem. So this, for AZT, if this is AZT, uh, inhibitor of HIV, that it needs to have a phosphate on it when it's inside the cell. Um, but if you try to deliver it with the phosphate on there, the negative charge repels it. So Professor Imbach came up with this strategy to put these protecting groups on it. And then now this gets delivered and using the same enzyme that we used, then it gets converted to the active drug, which in this case is AZT with a charged phosphate on it. And um, it's the same trick as by masking the negative charge that it allows it to get delivered. So we use this, which was published in the early 1990s, and we applied it to oligonucleotides, double-stranded oligonucleotides, and no one had been able to go from here to there because of the difficulty of manufacturing these. Um, and it turns into a much more complicated problem as if we look at this um, oligo that it has phosphate units. Every nucleotide has a phosphate connecting unit between it. This is just abbreviated. So there's two negative charges on each of these phosphates. And that's the, the difficulty from just doing one. To try to do it at all of these turns out to be exceptionally difficult. And you can't, um, after you synthesize the oligonucleotide, you can't put the protecting group on the phosphate. It has to be while it's being synthesized. So we made individual what are called amidites, the RNA building blocks. And, and we added our protecting group to each of those building blocks. So we could place, every time we put in an RNA subunit, we would have our um, protecting group already on there. And so that would neutralize the charge. It would never have a negative charge. So the conditions to make the building blocks, that was pretty straightforward because that was essentially what Imbach had done here with a, a few tricks. But to get this on an RNA synthesizer so that it would um, put them all on like this and then you have to go through a chemistry that's called deprotection and there's other protecting groups on the nuclear bases, the A, C, Gs, and Us. And those have to come off. And the trick was to get those protecting groups off after synthesis while you left these phosphotriesters on. And that took a tremendous amount of effort. In fact, I would say that was six years of our work was just going from here to here so that we could make the molecule. And then once we have these single-stranded oligonucleotides, you have to make them double-stranded. And that normally is, is very easy. But because of these groups are large and they're opposed to each other, it turns out you can only place them at specific locations. And there are 40 to the 60 potential um, placements here. And that is 10 to the 96th power of possibilities, which is 15 logs more than all the atoms in the universe. You cannot make that many molecules. 